Okay, let's turn to Proverbs chapter number 3. Said I've been getting a lot of sermons in Proverbs. Now uh, we've uh, we studied some things that wisdom does um, last uh, couple services. Um, Proverbs chapter three. Um, you know the Bible personifies wisdom in several ways. Mostly, it's a, a female uh, a person uh, that it, it uh, a wise woman. And uh, so tonight I'm going to call the sermon, What's in Her Hands? Uh, what's in Her Hands? Proverbs 3, uh, verse 13, uh, we're going to read down to uh, uh, verse number 18, then we're going to skip back to verse number 6. Um, it says, She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding, uh, he hath established the heavens. I didn't start back far enough, did I? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days are in her right hand. There we go. That's the scripture we're looking for. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. Now, skip down there to verse number 6 or back to verse number 6. And uh, the Bible says in 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Heavenly Father, help us now as we look into what the wisdom has in her hands, God. And help us to realize that it uh, benefits us to have the right things in our hands, Lord, spiritually and physically. Uh, Lord, help us to uh, be wise and know the benefits of being wise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, hands are important. Um, if you think about it, just about everybody that makes a living uses their hands in some way or another. Um, my wife was a bookkeeper. You used your hands all the time, didn't you? You held the pencil. Yeah. I got the little lumps. Yeah, she's got the little lumps. And, and, and you can feel the little calluses on, on my fingers from uh, holding a drawing pencil and, and uh, some, some uh, other calluses on my hands from running the printing presses and uh, doing all the work there. Uh, uh, Brother Clay over here uh, works with his hands, uh, working on cars and things. And... Uh, Uncle Charlie, he uh, uses his hands to cut people's hair with. Uh, and you ladies uh, that work in the home, you work with your hands all the time, cooking and cleaning and uh, doing all kinds of things. So what's in your hands is really, really, really important. And it's important to God too. Amen. Um, your hands ought to be clean. Uh, James uh, 4, 8 says, Draw an eye to God, and he will draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Uh, they should do some work. Uh, you know, God likes busy hands at work. Just not busy hands, but hands at work. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 says, And uh, that ye study to be quiet and do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Uh, and you know what? Uh, Ephesians uh, 4.28 said, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, a thing uh, which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Uh, so you see, uh, there's all kinds of uh, uh, work we have to do for various reasons, not only to provide for our own, but uh, to give to other people that are in need. Um, and uh, sometimes what you carry in your hands is of utmost importance to you. Here in this scripture, we have the personification of wisdom. And wisdom is carrying a, a couple things here. Notice that first of all, 
the Bible says in verse 16 that length of days is in her right hand. Length of days. That means long life, folks. Uh, if you want a long life, be wise. Be wise. Now, um, you know, God did have one commandment with promise. Does anybody know what that commandment was? Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Uh, if you did that, God promised you you would have a long life on this earth. But there's other things in the Bible that seem to indicate that uh, you can have a long life if you observe them. Um, long life is a lot of uh, people um, wish for a long life. Uh, probably if you uh, uh, surveyed uh, most students in school, like high school students, probably a goodly portion of them said, well, I want to live a long time. Um, they think life, uh, you know, uh, is better uh, in the length of it. Yes uh, and no. It depends on what kind of condition you are when you get to the, the, the realm of old age. Um, 1 Kings uh, 3.11 um, God uh, told Solomon this. Solomon uh, went to God to pray when he started his kingdom. And uh, God told him to ask anything he wanted from God. And, and so uh, Solomon got down and he, he prayed for wisdom. And God said this to him. And God said it to him, Because thou hast not asked this thing, nor hast asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Solomon wanted to be a good leader so he could be a good leader for his people. And God admired that because a lot of people, look, if God came down to most people and said, you can ask anything you want, they'd have a Cadillac and a bank full of money for you knew it because uh, that's what's important to them. Uh, but that wasn't important to Solomon. Well, first of all, David had a lot of stuff, so stuff didn't impress Solomon for one thing. But he, I, I think he probably thought long and hard about this. And went to God and, and uh, he realized that if he was going to be an effective ruler, a beloved ruler, and a ruler that, uh, you know, is really not going to have a whole lot of trouble, he would need a lot of wisdom. And so he, that's what he asked God for. And, and God admired him for not asking for a long life. Because most rulers, they're so in love with their own power, they want to live for a long time, you know. Uh I'm glad we have the system of government that we have. The one thing the founding fathers looked at was the history of the monarchy in Europe. And that was a problem. If you got a good ruler and he lived a long time, yay, you know, that was fine. But if you got a bad ruler and he lived a long time, well, you were kind of stuck with him until he died. And that wasn't very good. And so they said, okay, let's come up with a system of government where we don't have this guy that gets in office and just stays and stays and stays and stays. Let's kind of turn him over every now and then so we got a, a new guy. And if he's bad, we can get rid of him quick enough or get somebody better in there. That was their idea. And you know, it's worked pretty good, really. Now, we may not like the fellow that's in there now or the fellow that wasn't there or whatever, but just wait a while. We'll get a chance to elect a new person in the office. Um, length of days. Um, you know what? Uh, God gives the satisfaction of a long life as a blessing to some folks. Psalm 91, 16 says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. He's talking about... Uh, He's talking about David, I guess, in Psalm 91. Proverbs 3, 2 says, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Talking about uh, uh, Solomon. God, uh, God, uh, God is uh, blessing folks with a long life. Um, some people, uh, if they're wise, they know what to do with a long life. And then other people, well... They seem to waste their life, and it seems a shame if they get to be old. Because instead of having a, a short-wasted life, they have a long-wasted life. And, and there's many people like that throughout history. Um, but not all long life is a blessing. Uh, 
Let me give you an example of that. In 1973, there was an engineer in the Soviet Union who worked at the time at the biggest particle collider um, in the world at the time. Uh, now, those of you that don't know what a particle collider is, it's this big circle and they send these atomic particles around and around and around and around and around. And his job was, uh, when the machine was uh, not working, his job was to go in and fix things that went wrong inside the little uh, tunnel of, uh, of, of the things that went around and around. Well, what nobody didn't know is the lights that indicated whether the thing was on or not were also on the blink. And so they called upon him to go in there and fix something. Well, he didn't know that the machine was on, and he stuck his head in there. And he said he saw this great big ball of yellow light and flash, and all of a sudden, next thing he knew, he was laying on the floor. It drilled a hole in his head, all the way through his head, to the left side of his head. And uh, they didn't know that till all his hair fell off, and then they realized there's a hole in this guy's head. It goes all the way through his head. And uh, so they sat around waiting for this guy to die. <laughs> you know, uh, wonderful Soviet Union. <laughs> uh, and because uh, they didn't know what to do for him. Well, you know what? He didn't die. And he didn't die, and he didn't die. And finally. Uh, well, they figured, okay, well, this wasn't going to kill him. Um, but some odd things happened. Um, when uh, he got a little older, uh, he lost his hearing in his left ear all of a sudden. And um, like I said, his hair fell out. Uh, he also uh, sometimes would fall on the ground and have these uh, like epileptic seizures and things but uh, one of the things that uh, that happened to him is that if you look at a picture of him now and he's still alive one side of his face has aged normally he's like 93 years old now this guy and the other side looks like it did in 1973 it hasn't aged a day and they still haven't figured out why that has happened. But, you know, um, you know, ha not being able to hear and having seizures and stuff is it, not that great a life. Uh, this guy's lived a long time. But, you know, just some people, well, it might have been more merciful if he had went home a whole lot sooner, this fellow. But uh, I've I met people like that. You wonder, well, why in the world did God let him live this long? But... Um, I, and I don't know why God let this guy live so long. Just as an example, I guess, to folks. Uh, for one thing, uh, if, if you work in one of those nuclear collider things, don't trust the lights. That's, that's the lesson I would learn from that. Go, go and make sure it's on before you stick your head in there. Amen? Length of days. Well, she's got length of days in her hand. And then the, other, the next thing she has in her hand is she has riches. Now, some people say, oh boy, I'd like a handful of riches. Well, I think this is more like how to make a living. How to make a living. And her left hand, riches. You know, God, God just doesn't give people riches. Uh, usually, he makes us uh, work for riches. But there's some things about riches that maybe you need to be reminded of. First of all, I want to remind you that riches are not a permanent thing. The Bible says in Revelation 18, 17, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off. So these people in Revelation, they saw the fall of the, the riches of Babylon come, come down in one hour. Well, it's not very uh, much time for, for a whole kingdom, to, a rich kingdom to fall. But the Bible predicts that in the future, uh, it's just going to be flat in one hour. 
And we've seen that in history. Everybody knows about the crash of 1929, and uh, there were other uh, depressions and recessions and things we've had. Uh, riches are not permanent, folks. Uh, you have to be very careful with them. You have to uh, save them and invest them wisely and, and uh, you know, make sure they're not stolen by anybody. And so they're not permanent. The other thing about riches that Christians especially need to remember is riches are a very worldly thing. So we have to be careful as Christians how we deal with our riches because riches down here are not heavenly. Now we have our own kind of riches and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the, the riches down here, they're worldly. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he hath respect unto the recompense of the reward. Uh, the Bible says that all the, the treasures in Egypt, that in Egypt's a type of the world, uh, the, the reproach of Christ is greater riches than all the riches of the world. And boy, there's lots of riches in the world. Um, I made a list of all the rich, uh, really, really rich people in the United States. Uh, there was a guy named uh, Stephen Gerard. Uh, that lived in the uh, 1750s and 1730s. And he had equivalent of uh, $120 billion in today's money. John Jacob Astor, you probably heard of him from history class. Uh, the Waldorf Astoria was named after him. He lived uh, 1763 to 1848. He had 138 billion in modern money. Then there was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh, he lived in the 1790s to the 1870s. He had about 205 billion in today's money. Uh, one of his sons, Henry Vanderbilt, had uh, 205 billion also. I'm wondering if he just inherited his dad's money. He, li he lived till 1885. Uh, Andrew Carnegie uh, of uh, the Carnegie uh, Institute and all like that. He lived from 1835 to 1919. He had 310 billion in today's money. John G. Rockefeller. I'm sure you've heard of him. He had uh, 118 to 420 billion dollars in today's money. Henry Ford. Good old Henry Ford that made the cars. He had 199 billion dollars in today's money. That's a lot of money for making cars. And today we've got our own share of billionaires. And this is in today's money. Jeff Bezos has 195.9. Elon Musk has 146.5. Bill Gates has 135.8. Uh, Larry Ellison has 119.5. Mark Zuckerberg has 117.5. Then there's uh, the, the guy named Buffett, Bloomberg, a guy named Jobs, and the son of Mr. Sam Walton of Walmart, Lucas Walton. They're all filthy rich. So what do they do with their money? I don't know. Are they happy? I don't know that either. I wonder if you took a survey of all the people I just named and asked them if they were truly happy, what would they say? I know one thing. I haven't got much money, but I sure am happy. I'm happy in Jesus, man. I, 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 God provides for me on this planet, and, and he looks after me, and I'm going to a place where uh, nobody ever dies, and I've got a mansion, and... And man, what's not to be happy about? And you know, riches are unreliable. I want to say this about riches. Worldly riches are unreliable. 1 Timothy 6.17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. Looky there, uncertain riches. James 5.2 says, Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. So, so riches aren't very reliable. But ain't it good that God's got his own riches? And you can have some of those. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. And glory by Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1.18 The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. One day we're going to have the riches of God up in heaven. We won't need the riches down here. We got some up yonder. So she has in her hand the length of days. She has in her hand riches. And I want you to notice in verse 16. She has in her hand honor. 
honor. So what do you mean by honor? Well, honor must be recognized by in order to have it. You must be recognized as honorable to have honor. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Romans 13, 7, Render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So some people are due honor even on this earth. And we're to honor them. Now, most people, when they think of honors, they think of some kind of award program. Most Americans, it's sad to say, all the awards they know about are from the entertainment industry. Uh, and there's a slew of them. And I'm sure everybody in this room knows about, uh, like the Academy Awards. They've been given out since 1929. They're giving to the filmmaking industry by the Academy of Arts and Sciences, or, uh, Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Then you have the Tony Awards. They're given for Broadway plays. They've been given away since 1947. The Grammy Awards. Uh, they're an industry award given uh, to uh, film and uh, the acting industry uh, for the music in the acting industry. And they've been given away since 1959. The Golden Globe Awards is put out by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association since 1943. The Emmy Awards for television, uh, which is the Academy of TV Arts and Sciences uh, since 1955. The Strength Screen Actors Guild Awards, the SAG Awards, since 1995. That's a newbie, are given away. And But fewer people know about real awards that are given. Like in the military, we have Purple Heart recipients and Silver Star recipients and Legion of Merit recipients and the Distinguishing Flying, Flying Cross and the Air Medal and the Medal of Honor. The Medal of Honor was first the Navy Medal. Now it's Army, Navy, and Air Force. The Marines get the Navy version of it. And there's all kinds of military medals that people just don't know about. They'd rather concentrate on uh, entertainment. Look, the military people do far more good for you than the entertainment industry. Honor must be recognized. Uh, now, sometimes, sometimes honor is just realized. People go around saying, oh, yeah, that's an honorable thing. We ought to... We ought to we, we ought to honor that, or honor that person, because they're honorable. First Thessalonians 4.4, 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Honor is something that you have to, if you're going to have honor, you have to do something honorable to be honored. You just can't go along your life and expect everybody to bow down and honor you just because you're you. You have to be honorable in some way. Special in some way. Excel in some way. And then, of course, there's the honor that we give to God, the reverence that we must give to God. Hebrews 12, 9. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. How shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live... Ephesians 6, 2, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. God wants us to honor the things that are due honor. And as Christians, we can figure that out pretty easy. The Bible spells those out real clear. So, this lady wisdom, she's got some things in her hands that are important. God is concerned about the things in your life. And your hands have a lot to do with that. You know what he asked Moses, Exodus 4, 2, And the Lord said unto him, What is in thine hand? And, and he said, A rod. I remember Brother Bill preached that sermon about what's, what's in your hand, Moses. What's in your hand, Moses? Well, what's in your hand, sister? What's in your hand, brother? What's in your hand tonight? 
What's going to be in your hand tomorrow? Can God come down and say, what's in your hand? And you can uh, answer him clear, clear conscience and, and, and just, uh, just without guilt or fear and say, uh, you know, such and such and so and so. Lord, I've got it in my hands. God can use that thing. God can use your hands if you'll let him. God wants to use us. And you know what's better than that? God wants to reward us. And we won't get some little dumb statue, you know, uh, or, or some little gold-plated something, little metal. I mean, look, I've got awards in my life. I've, I've, I've got some awards for artwork that I've done and other things that I've done in my life. And, and I, those are proud things for me. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? Some of those things are way in the past. And they don't mean as much as they used to when I got them. I can look back and have fond memories. But today, today, we need to look to God and say, Okay, God, what kind of award do you want to give me? What can I do to please you? That's what we need to ask. And God can look down and, you know, he'll say, say well, What's in your hand? What's in your hand? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, God, for our hands. And Lord, thank you for these uh, things from the Bible to show us, uh, God, uh, uh, what can be in our hands and what we can do with them, what we shouldn't do with them, what to expect out of them and what not to expect out of them. Help us, Lord. Uh, God, nobody in this room is going to win an Academy Award or anything like that. And some of the folks in here's uh, been connected with the military and may, maybe they got some kind of a thing they got from that but they don't go around bragging about it if they did uh, maybe they uh, got awards in high school or uh, some college or something but God uh, we should look to the future and God we, we should look to you because we're going to be living with you an awful long time and God help us to have a, 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 an eternal mindset and God look for eternal things and mostly men's souls, God, help us tonight. Thank you for what you do for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.